you want to be an entrepreneur. Actually, when I typed it in, I was kind of thinking of, has anyone seen The Incredibles? You know that like fashion girl? And she, when um, they don't really know what's going on with the whole thing, and she's like, do you want to find out? Like, And her funny accent, that's what I kind of think of <laughs> when I typed it in. So yeah, and my company's called Okiki Consulting. So yeah, just a little bit about me. I'm five foot two. I'm Nigerian born. I was raised in Saskatchewan. Uh, my mom's here. <laughs> and I love my faith, my family, and just meeting new people. I love meeting new people, so that's a joy. I try to pick up new languages, and that kind of comes with meeting new people. I figure if that's a barrier, I'd like to <laughs> cross it. Um, I love trying new food. I'm a total foodie. And when I'm not doing consulting, I'm socializing and kind of volunteer for things. So I volunteer for the fashion festival. I volunteer at the jazz festival. And I recommend other people do too. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just try and find like artsy things in the community and get involved. And yeah, I've been running Okiki Consulting for two years now, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, and for some reason, I think it went mirror reverse. This logo is not upside down <laughs> in the version I sent it, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, that can be a little interesting sometimes. Um, what's it called? Yeah, so with entrepreneurship, that was actually something that was kind of like spoken to me through other people. Like I didn't even know that was something I was or as entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit. I didn't even know it was something I had. I just was always like trying to create content, new ideas. I would do like really weird things on the playground. Like um, <laughs> one time I would take line paper and I would draw in all these things because I was trying to make my own magazine. So I would like be like issue one and color it in with all these crayons and pencil crayons, staple it, and sell it to my friends in the playground for five cents. <laughs> and so I'll do like really like odd things. <laughs> that I look back like that's actually kind of strange, but like, yeah, it's just, and I was always just thinking of like, oh, it'd be cool someday I could like have my own scripts or my own this. So I didn't realize that was like an entrepreneurial thing. I just I thought it was fun. And then my mom would say that word to me a lot. Like, I think you have this, I think you have this. And I was so young, I was like, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> so I didn't really know what she kept mentioning to me. And then as I grew older, I was like, oh, that's what she was talking about all that time. Um, also people around me, um, they're always like, oh, you're always up to something. You're always up to like this. So kind of encouraging me in that, um, even uh, Josephine, who spoke um, first, she actually called me the other day and I was like, yeah, I just wanted to call you just to let you know. And that was before I even uh, planned this with the actor. Like, if you're up to anything, um, I want to help you out. I want to support you. So it's really cool to have people in your life who are willing to actually take that time to like say, like, I see what you're about and I want to be part of that journey with you. Um, personality tests. So yeah. Um, when I graduated from Edwards, uh, I finally took advantage of some of the resources that they had for us. So one of them is the um, career coaching. And so it's free for students, it's free for alumni if you haven't tried it yet. Yes, you do. Um, and you just go to a career coach and they just basically talk to you about what you like, your personality. They're kind of like a career counselor kind of person. They just like hear you out have discussion with you, and through them I got to take a um, strength finder test and the Myers-Briggs test, which I heard is actually quite expensive if you actually have to pay for it, but it's covered through them, so that was really nice. So I am uh, INFJ, I believe. Uh, so yeah, and uh, that was really cool just to find out a little bit more about myself and a little bit why I think the way I do and how I work with other people. So yeah, I guess the first steps is find out what you're passionate about. So I knew I was passionate about talking to people, meeting other people, and I really get excited. Like I have my own ideas, but I really get excited hearing about other people's ideas. Like when other people are like, like you have a podcast, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh cool, tell me about it. How did you go about it? And I love hearing like people having their own like passions and wanting to kind of get it going. And I'm like, oh, like how can I, help with that? How can I be part of that? Because I too want to get my stuff for it. So I figure it's like a collective help. I'm helping myself, I'm helping my friends, we're helping each other. It's a lot of fun. Uh, finding out who your target audience is. So I'm going to kind of go forward a little bit and then back. So the target audience for me was entrepreneurs, um, small to medium sized businesses, and nonprofits. Because I kind of saw this big gap between like people who had ideas 
and who needed that help, those services to kind of promote themselves and get known, but maybe they can't afford that big agency down the street, you know, <laughs> that's working with Sastel. And like, so where is that gap and, and how could I fill that? That was kind of like what I was hoping uh, I could kind of begin to get into. And so um, with that, you want to kind of make personalities for it. Sometimes that helps. <laughs> so this one, yeah, when Mac's making the pictures go upside down, I don't know why. <laughs> That's yeah, it's weird. So this one, um, her name's Wendy Ryder, and she's 30 years old. She owns a flower shop on Broadway, and she mainly advertises through word of mouth. She does some posts on Instagram, and um, she doesn't really know how to use like the behind the scenes of like Facebook ads effectively. So that would be someone I'd like to step in and kind of help her to do that. Uh, this one is Barry Brooks, and he's a social worker. He's trying to run a nonprofit, and he got a grant to use to find volunteers and kind of get that going. So again, because they are running on such small funds, I would come in and help them use that very efficiently and through targeted ads. So if we go back, um, once you figure that out, you want to get a hold of all the resources you can to perfect your craft. And please let me know if I'm talking too fast. <laughs> I tend to go like twice as fast as I practice things, so just let me know. Um, yeah, so just take advantage of every resource you have, and I'll kind of get more into that here. So um, the first one is people. Um, like Josephine said, talking to people. Uh, I went to a marketing conference called Fuse that they had at the basement a couple of years ago. They actually used the basement as the venue. Um, I think it's a combination of the Saskatchewan uh, Market Professional Association and IABC. They collaborated and brought in the speakers. Uh, one of them was uh, actually Rachel Milkey, uh, the lady who owns Hilberg and Burke. And funny enough, that was the first time I saw her product too. So I kind of met her and her product at the same time. <laughs> and um, they had another speaker uh, from Yemen and I remember her, uh, part of her story that really touched me is that she came to Canada, uh, she actually showed us her picture, she completely covered, um, completely um, new, fresh to the country, and then she talked about how um, she didn't get to have access to that education. So when she chose to, uh, she, she did a certificate in graphic arts, and then she said, okay, I actually wanna run a business, what can I do to do this? So, she actually would go up to managers and CEOs at companies and be like, hey, can you take me out for um, coffee? I just want to learn about accounting or I want to learn about this. And so many people were just randomly willing to teach her over lunch or coffee. And so she was really encouraging us to just go up to people and just ask them randomly uh, if they're willing to teach you anything. And you'd be surprised how many people here are actually willing to do that. So I took her advice, so I had to spread uh, a uh, Alexandria, she's back in Alberta now, but she had a teeth whitening business here. And so I met her at a conference and I was like, hey, like we're just talking. And then she's talking about running this teeth whitening business. And I was like, hey, can we do coffee one of these days? And she taught me about QuickBooks and that's what I use for my business. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not good at accounting at all. Like that's not my thing. Like how, if I run a business, that's my one tier. So she told me QuickBooks, that helps her dad, it helps her. Her dad's a farmer and he's just not into that and it helped him, so that's how I got into that. Another example I have of that is um, the lady that owns Twisted Goods, actually. Um, she, um, I saw her at a women's conference at my church and there she was talking about bringing your faith into business and how to like love people while you're doing your business and that they aren't separate. And so, yeah, like I was just really inspired by her talk about how she got even to owning the Twisted Goods, and um, I, I was really inspired by that, but I didn't know her personally, but I just felt like I had to talk to her. So after the conference, I went up to her and I was like, hey, I know you don't know me, but I really liked <laughs> your presentation on the panel. Uh, would you be willing to do a coffee with me? Actually, would you even be willing to be a mentor to me somehow? And she was so cool. She was like, oh yeah, like here's my card. Call me right away, let's do coffee. And she had like a one-year-old at the time, she was pregnant with twins, and she was totally willing to meet up with me. And uh, she did, and we talked for like two hours, and she just gave me all sorts of advice. And um, actually, I'll kind of go, as I go for, further along in the presentation, one of my big clients I got is through her. 
just through word of mouth. And she, I personally have never done any um, marketing for her, but she just liked me so much and liked my story. She was always checking in on me that she was telling her friends about me. And so talking to strangers is uh, actually a good thing. <laughs> uh, another thing is databases and online forums. So jo joining databases, online forums, there's a lot of online schools now, online teachers. One of my favorites is uh, using lynda.com. And I, I actually say it's one of the best things I got from going to university was this database. It sounds really bad. There are classes at university that are helpful. Go to school. <laughs> but, no, but I feel like I'm, I'm a, I like to learn things that are very practical. That I know that I can learn it and that I can use it. That's just, I learned that's how my brain really thrives. So I find that the courses on lynda.com are very practical. They're really helpful. It's not called LinkedIn Learning because LinkedIn bought lynda.com. And one of the great things about it is when you finish a certification on there, it actually can publish to your LinkedIn profile. So it makes you look even more professional. So uh, that's been really good. So through there, I've been learning uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign. I didn't know how to do HTML or CSS before my job. And they were talking about knowing HTML and CSS. So whenever my supervisor didn't have anything to give me, I would just go on lynda.com courses on my computer, and now I know how to do HTML and CSS, which is something I never expected to learn. And it's all my profile now. So just ways to keep learning and keep up your skills. Uh, take advantage of it. If you aren't in um, U of S, or if you don't have access to lynda.com for some reason, I think it's $25 a month, and there's a lot of other course places too, like Udemy and all that. Um, I think I like that because of its connection to LinkedIn, and so many employers look at LinkedIn, so there is that advantage there. Workshops like this one, yeah, <laughs> free workshop. Uh, and there's lots of places that do free workshops, free lunch and learns. Just look for those opportunities to learn, uh, to get involved. Um, I would try and go to lots of random conferences. Still do along the way. Podcasts, I love podcasts. Uh, often when I'm working, uh, I'll listen to podcasts. There's a lot of knowledgeable people on there. Actually, one of my favorite podcasts right now is called Brown Ambition. And yeah, it's like these two girls and they're just talking about finances and how to take care of them. And they're very knowledgeable. And you can just learn a lot from these. Um, YouTube as well is another good <laughs> tutor. Lots of things that I didn't know how to do with Illustrator. Uh, we had a global biotech week was in the last week of September at my work and I was constantly designing posters for different events. And sometimes there are some things that I'm like, how do I do this? Just YouTube it, it's there. <laughs> so it's like, it's so different nowadays. Like it's kind of crazy to think some of the things people went to school for, especially for graphic design, you could literally find a lot of it online nowadays. Um, yeah, and nonprofits designed to help entrepreneurs. So if you don't already know about this one, there's one in town called Square One, and they're like, that's all they're for, is helping people get started with business. So you can literally email them as many questions as you want. I've emailed them so many times. You can call them as many times as you want. They try to get you with experts too, um, like a free one hour consult. So they'll bring in like, an accountant or business lawyer. And they do workshops like this as well. So check their website. There's some that are paid, usually pretty affordable though. There's some, there, a lot of them are free. And just try and like um, see what you can get from that. And they have a lot of resources online as well. So yeah, that's a really um, great way to get started. So yeah, and then another thing, other than talking to strangers, talk to friends and support them. And in supporting them, they support you. So a lot of you are commenting on my picture, and that was actually taken by my friend, uh, Nicole Murray N. So she's on, I guess it was the your left. And uh, yeah, and so at the time, a little bit of a backstory of that, I was, I was watching Okiki, and um, yeah, even my parents were like, they believed in it too, so they gave me funding too, and they're like, here's your funding, use it, <laughs> try to figure out the best way you can use it. And so I was like, okay, I wanna use this as well as possible. So, cause I'm gonna have to, like the project that you're saying, I'm gonna have to make a website, I'm gonna have to get business cards, I'm gonna have to make these. <laughs> like, there's all sorts of parts to it that I was trying to cover within that budget that they had given me. And so, um, 
N Nicole at the time, she was kind of just starting up. She had just finished doing like two YWAMs. And she did like an Ethiopia Fashion Week through her YWAM. So YWAM is kind of a, it's youth with a mission. You kind of go to a place, you get trained to do missions, and then you do missions. So I think her training was in Germany, and then she got to go to Ethiopia. And so she was kind of just starting at the time. But I knew she was really good. I checked her website. Um, she didn't have a lot of business photo shots yet of like business professionals, but I thought, you know, she had modeling, and for me, this sounds funny, but I had to make sure she knew how to take pictures of me because not everyone is used to <laughs> the melanin, you know? <laughs> so I had to say, like, can she take these pictures very well? And uh, she, had, she did Ethiopian Fashion Week, so that should answer your question there. So I was like, okay, I think I, I want to give this a shot. I'm going to talk to her and see if she's up for it. And then she's like, yeah, I think I can do this. Like, I kind of gave her some example pictures of what business professional pictures would look like, and she was interested. So... That time, she gave me like 20 pictures for $300. Um, and so this is like just one of them. Um, if, if you go, yeah, like at the beginning, that's another one she took. So she took some very, and the couch was her idea. She even brought it. <laughs> for she, she's like, we're going to go on top of this parkade. Like she had all these like ideas. So um, yeah, so it's, it's a good thing to support your friends as they're coming up. Is check it, like obviously. Make sure they're talented, make sure they'll make you look good. But there's a lot of talented people who are just not known yet. So if you know them and you know that they're good, give them a chance and, and also like work with them because you're helping each other grow. And I think that's the really important thing. So um, yeah, that was really awesome because now from after, not long after working with me, someone picked her up through Instagram and she got to work with New York Fashion Week and she's gotten to do Fashion Weeks in Europe. And uh -huh. so like now I think it should be like way harder for me to get. <laughs> but at least I got it from the start and it was awesome. And <laughs> so yeah, another one too is uh, my uh, friend Owen Osman. He has Light and Dark Media. Uh, he's also on the other side. So they're taking the picture. And uh, again, he has a lot of video projects now. Um, I was one of his very early ones. <laughs> And um, because he knew I, I know a bit about video editing, he was like, hey, I'll film the whole thing through for you for 200 bucks, just give you the clips and you can edit it. So I ended up making my own, editing my own promo video, um, but he just did the clip for me. So sometimes you can kind of get deals um, just to kind of make your cost low. And I have Michaela and Josh out there, you probably wonder who that is. They're back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they've been helping me a lot too. They're getting their videography and photography businesses going and you should definitely talk to them after they're very what talented Instagram account? okay um, they'll give it to you because they're kind of long <laughs> yeah, yeah but they're they're pretty uh passionate about that so yeah and then i was gonna say get ready for the roller coaster ride so it is uh a roller coaster ride when you start a business. And here's what they don't tell you. Because obviously you see the pictures, you see everything. It's not to say it isn't exciting. And if you're an, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, there's kind of like no other way to do things in a sense. Like it just feels normal to you. But it's also like a different category of of being. It's another way of thinking than people who don't think that way or people who don't feel that way. So at the beginning, get ready for lots of work. Uh, like Mordecai was saying with project management, that's how I felt when I realized this was what I was gonna do. It was like full on, like, okay, these are the costs, these are the things. Um, I was kind of stubborn about costs, so I literally was like, nope, I'm gonna learn how to design this. So I designed my own logo. I hadn't designed a logo before. I was like, if I can learn this and practice on my own business, then at least by the time I get clients, that I could say I could help them with the same thing. So I designed the logo, I designed my brochures, I designed this. It took a long time because I did it that way. And I'm not sure if that's the best suggestion for everyone. It depends on what your business is. Design our website. But I, I was like, no, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be my process so that at least I will gain those skills. And this is what I want to do long term. So I might as well start with myself mm -hmm. and then know that I'll be confident so that if I meet with a client, I can be like, hey, like this is what I did. And I want to do it really well. So that meant obviously it took a lot of time especially for my website it was my first one ever so i had to really like it took time so <laughs> my process kind of started in march and it didn't really like finish till august and that was me being at home like every day 
and trying to like work at it. So because of that, it can be lonely at times when you're starting because people are like, man, you're like super busy, but we don't get what you're doing. You're kind of in your own thing. Like, you know, just, and you're kind of spending a lot of time with yourself, like thinking, especially if you're a sol solopreneur, you really kind of get in your own head a bit and you're really like trying to get this thing going. And so that's why it's really good to talk to other people who either think similarly or in this field. That's why it's good like you're in this co-working space so you can kind of like have other people who kind of understand where you're coming from because a lot of people ask a lot of questions and like, oh, like how's it going, this, 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 but they don't really get like where you're coming from. And especially when you're starting out, that's when you really kind of need probably as much support as you can. And another thing I learned is that there's many ways to be an entrepreneur. So I think like we've all seen those YouTube commercials where they're like, hey, like this person walked away from everything and they're doing this and blah, 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 blah. And that is cool. I'm not against that. I think that's awesome. But I think um, there's also this idea, I think through social media, that there's only like one way to be an entrepreneur and it's like you're all in and you can't do anything else. And like, I think that <laughs> you can certainly gain from both. Like at, at this moment, I'm working at Adjunct Bio, an innovation place. And because it's a company that does so many events, it's helped me plan this event. Um, I'm constantly doing graphic design for their different events. So it's gotten me better at graphic design. And that has helped me help my clients. So I feel like you can get value from wherever you are. I think it's just a choice. Obviously, pick a, if you are working, Try to pick a job that would actually give back to you in that sense and not feel like a soul draining job. But I don't think it's like one or the other. I think you can definitely do multiple things at once. And if there is a job that you feel like, hey, this is giving me value, but I still have my side project, that's fine too. And if you go all in, that's amazing as well. But I, I think just to kind of spread out your idea of what entrepreneurship looks like, just because we do live in such a day and age with the YouTube and Instagram of people being like, hey, I travel the world and get paid for it. And that's like, <laughs> this idea of like, this is like the only way to be an entrepreneur. And if you're not like that person, you're failing. I think um, that's not really a healthy way to look at it. Yeah, so tips and tricks I already said, save money anywhere you can. Advertise where it's affordable, so I use a lot of social media, word of mouth. The only prints, one I did with Shepherd's Guide, and that's because they called me and then, <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll give you this kind of deal. So yeah, and I just have this random tip in there. Use G Suite. Gmail has like G Suite, and I think it's awesome because it comes with like Google Analytics and like um, Google AdWords. And, and I know <laughs> people will be like, oh, I'm giving all my info to Google, but there's a lot of free tools on there that they have that can really help you kind of like um, refine some of your business processes. So that's why I like them so much. So yeah, like I said. I'm running OKP, I'm working in communications. It's helping me invest back into my business in more ways than one, using my knowledge. I can also buy programs, like I bought like motion FX and stuff so I could do some like special effects for like things for my customers. So you can like buy different things. Um, buy, if you, just remember like when you have a business, you wanna be able to invest in it. So whatever helps you get there, <laughs> helps you get there. And that might be for a couple years, that might, Maybe my business will scale up so much, I won't have time to also work. We'll see how it goes, but act at the moment, I'm actually um, quite pleased with the situation. And these are just some of the clients I've gone to work with. Uh, yeah, so Jerry's is my most recent one, and I started with them in November, and that was through um, my friend who owns Twisted Goods because she just told her about me. And basically, like, we had our first meeting. She didn't really... Um, it wasn't even a meeting for her to ask to hire, to get me on board. It was just to meet me because she was already kind of determined in her mind because of what my friend said that I was already working with her. So it just shows the power of connections, talking to people. And me and uh, Ellie, we have a great relationship. So it's been really fun uh, working with her as well. So it's just really cool to get those experiences. So thank you. <laughs>